Testing, one, two, one, two. All right, we're live. Hi, guys. Welcome to VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality. If you're new here and it's your first time to the channel, I'd like to welcome you. Very nice to meet you. And a huge welcome back, of course, to all our regular subscribers and regular viewers as well, because it's thanks to you guys that I will continuously upload new videos to the channel. Now, today we're talking about the Steam Deck and also the integration of VR in it, because if we go to the other screen, uh, you'll notice that a couple of weeks ago, we spoke on the channel about the Steam Deck and how potentially uh, this could basically be absolutely huge for VR because, of course, undoubtedly, it could uh, include technologies where basically VR headsets could effectively be compatible with this actual device. Now, first of all, before I go into the actual uh, video, I just want to mention very quickly that um, there is really cool stuff coming from September onwards. Let me just show you very quickly if I transition away again. Um, basically, from September onwards, we're going to have a new show which talks about all the behind the scenes backstage of what it takes to actually create VR experiences. And we've actually started to interview a whole bunch of different developers, including the team behind Pixel Ripped and also Yuki that they developed very recently, uh, as well as the guys who developed Walkabout Mini Golf. Uh, we've been talking to the guys at Pico as well, and also some of the companies they've worked with. Uh, we're also talking to the guys who are releasing Synth Riders. Uh, on you know very popular title and they're releasing it on PSVR very soon. We're also going to be talking to the guys from Yo who bring you some very cool accessories. Tesla Suit is another company that we're going to be talking to. Uh, you know, just trying to figure out how these guys put all this stuff together. What are the challenges that everyone has? How they surmount them? Uh, try to inspire other people who want to get into VR become a developer, know more about the behind the scenes of all the different VR aspects of the industry. So this is coming from September, guys, and there's going to be a ton, ton more people uh, who we're basically going to be interviewing. So do make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button and also enable your bell notification uh, so that YouTube tells you in your video feed, you know, once these videos will start to be uploaded to the channel. But back to today's topic. So. Uh, what I'm actually very excited about, first of all, now, you know, guys, that I don't particularly really like to give these guys publicity, but at the end of the day, Facebook's uh, Oculus Quest number two, apparently, according to Valve and uh, also an article uh, by Tech, Tech Radar, you know, is already going to be compatible with the Steam Deck that's going to come out. Now, this is huge news because it just goes to show that we what we were speculating about in the video that we released two weeks ago, and I really encourage you to go and check out that video after today's video, um, you know, is that already... Now, apparently the quality is not exactly going to be great, um, you know, and also let's not forget that the Steam Deck only is going to be running at apparently uh, maximum 60 hertz, uh, so 60 frames per second. That You know, we all know that the Quest runs faster than that. Um, so... You know, but it's already a start. It just goes to show that if indeed the Steam Deck becomes very popular, then the next iteration of it will undoubtedly, um, you know, have VR capability um, for sure, right? And also, let's not forget that the Steam Deck is, although it's not going to be released with it at the beginning, apparently, it will also include cloud computing in the future. They will actually do a role a rollout, a software update, if you wish, which will give people the opportunity to actually run everything, Steam, everything. So it will not be done locally. It will be done through the cloud. Um, you know, whether that will be rolled out worldwide, we're not quite sure because, for example, uh, there's another company called Shadow who provide these kind of services where you can actually download and run all your PC stuff, um, you know, using a tablet or, or different devices without having to use your actual PC itself. So it's done through the cloud. Now, um, Valve will be releasing this technology as well um, as they basically, you know, uh, roll out the technology as time goes by. So that's actually something that is very, very interesting, uh, I think, in terms of the development of the Steam Deck. Now, also, the other thing is, um, I'm just trying to get the ads out. Okay, there we go. 
Um, the other thing is for the actual Steam Deck now, there's also been another article that came out very recently uh, from Road to VR that talked, asked about standalone VR headset. Valve Deck hardware is very relevant to our future plans. So uh, if I just jump here to what the CEO said, uh, we're not ready to say anything about a standalone VR headset, but Steam Deck's hardware would run well in that environment with the TBD necessary. It's very relevant to us and our future plans uh, is what Valve said. Now TPD, TDP, just so you know, stands for, stand for thermal design power, which describes how much heat a processing system generates under load and how much power it consumes. Portable devices like phones need a low uh, thermal design power so they don't overheat or consume battery too quickly. This is especially important for standalone VR headsets because of the high performance demands balanced against the needs to prevent overheating of one device. Now, if we go to some of the actual uh, uh, patent designs, now there was an article that was released last year. This was back in the 31st of July, 2020. And if we go and check out the actual picture that you can see here, let me just uh, copy the address of the picture, put it here, there we go. Now look at the article 212, which is here. You will see next to the tower, there's actually some kind of tablet or device uh, next to the actual tower on the table. And you can see that the painting here is, this is a valve painting. Now it shows that there are base stations on the walls, but this can't be, this is not today's, uh, the topic of today's conversation. So uh, don't look too much at, you know, all the rest. Just focus more on the actual, you know, the fact is this is a VR, a character, someone playing VR wirelessly and we can see 212, there seems to be a little device here on the table. Now, could this be the Steam Deck? I don't know. It's very ambiguous, speculative at this moment in time, but very interesting because if we go back to the Road to VR article, um, you know, these are some of the other, um, this is some of the other patent drawings that have been submitted and approved uh, by the Valve team for a standalone wireless device. And I have to say, it looks pretty cool. Although, I mean, these are just drawings, right? So we, we can't say what exactly it will, be look, it will look like. And, you know, in terms of final design product, we can't say this would be it. Um, but, you know, the fact is that these drawings are confirming that, of course, Valve are working on some form of um, device that would be wireless and, you know, this just goes to show that if they will be using the Steam Deck, because the Steam Deck can be plugged in at the moment, you know, used just like a real PC, guys. You know, this is what you guys need to, you know, if you're not familiar with um, what Steam Deck is, um, oops, let me just, there we go, get rid of this. Uh, if you're not familiar with what Steam Deck is all about, um, you know, it is basically a PC in your pocket is what it is. And it will be actually run either locally to begin with, and then later you can choose to run it from the cloud. So all your different Steam applications, all your PC VR titles, eventually in the next iteration, if the first Steam Deck becomes popular and they decide to release a second version, then all your PC VR titles will undoubtedly be available to run directly from a portable device that can stream all your PC VR titles from it. So PC VR, guys, is very much alive. And we'll do a separate video about this because there's a lot of talks in the industry about uh, certain influencers trying to get clicks and clickbait, you know, trying to say that PC VR is, is, is not going anywhere. And all. It's, it's rubbish, guys. PC VR is evolving. It's going to become amazing. And it's potentially the only other technology other than AR and MR that will compete or give people like Facebook a good run for their money for any other people who perhaps haven't developed a standalone VR headset. For example, Lynx, if I go to their, uh, if I transition back and I go to to the links page, 
right? Links have just released very, very uh, recently, and we'll do a separate video on this as well. Um, okay, let me just get rid of the ads very quickly. We're live. This is a first cut, non-edited video, guys. But basically, links are in the works to release. I mean, they, they've been in the works for more than a year, to be honest, guys. But, you know, it's great that the fact that they're still working on it, they're going to roll out a Kickstarter campaign, I think, uh, at the end of the quarter. They're working with big partners, big people, you know, to release a standalone VR slash AR headset. Now, these kind of guys need, the, the market needs more competition. And, kind of weird. and we can't rely, unfortunately, purely on standalone uh, mobile headsets. It's just not something that's possible because there, there aren't enough people in it. Until we have Samsung, Canon, HTC releasing for consumer, Epson, uh, HP who continuously develop, Pico who develop for the Western market, uh, you know, and, and various other brands, Lynx, uh, and, and, and whoever, maybe 10 or 15 brands who then develop, uh, develop sorry, VR headsets for the consumer market to, 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 to do standalone stuff. We need other technologies to potentially compete with standalone. And the only other technology right now, guys, it is, in my opinion, this technology with a box, two on two, number two on two here, figure two, a box that enables you to stream directly from the cloud onto your PC VR device. You know, how much will it cost and all these kind of things in the future? Maybe we might have to pay an extra 300 US dollars, let's say, because you need both the VR device and also the portable box. Who knows? We don't know how much these things will cost. To be honest with you, we could have people like, um, you know, Verizon or, 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 or for people who know Singtel here in Asia, uh, you know, basically telecoms company who will start to uh, create an actual uh, box that is not required to be, you know, something of a, a game. It could just be purely a hub, right? And maybe the hub will cost $50. Who knows? We don't know. And all this is coming in the next, well, it will be coming in the next two, three years. It's not coming this year. That's for sure, guys. I mean, at the moment, you know, it's not coming this year. But anyway, there you have it. Development with Valve and the Steam Deck technology. Developing a VR wireless headset for Valve is definitely in the works and the Steam Deck is definitely part of the strategy that they have in the future. So we'll definitely see something with Valve, I reckon, by, I think 2023 would be a safe bet uh, because they're going to need time to roll out the Steam Deck version 1 and then they're going to have to roll out Steam Deck version 2. Um, so, you know, unless they can do a, a software update in it, but I, I doubt it because this is more of a hardware issue, but who knows? It could be a software thing. Maybe they don't need to release a second Steam Deck. We'll all know as time goes by within 2022. So 2022 will be very exciting for PC VR. Um, you know, I'm very excited and very pumped about this. Now, let's thank you guys and go to some comments about the previous videos to, 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 yeah, let, let's just go and check out some of your videos, your comments, and also welcome you guys, welcome some of you, the new guys to the channel. So let's go to the, uh, VR Essentials YouTube studio. Let's just welcome some new people to begin with, uh, which will be here recent subscribers there we go and let's go by date so i just want to welcome imana bolodoro welcome to you karen berbeck nikki alusher i hope i pronounced all your names correctly sorry by the way if i don't tony glibson rosie florencio guel stephen firehart uh, th3 tragic prince paul withers throng and fram and Callum O'Connor. Guys, thank you so much for joining the channel. Uh, you guys are super awesome. You're part of a community that's almost at 10,000 subscribers, guys. So please share these videos so more people get to see it. We can grow the community and leave your comments below also what you think about today's topic and also any questions you may have so other people in the community can potentially also respond to your comments and answer any queries you have. Let's go to some of the comments now very quickly about the previous video, which was all about uh, well, let's go to the previous video that was about the Steam Deck and see some of your comments. UMPC, am I a joke to you? Thanks again for your comment here. Um, 
Echo had clad, you're right, is 65% a game console and 35% a Linux plus Windows wireless PC. Thanks for your work. You're very welcome, buddy. And uh, thanks for leaving your comment also. David Neves, for me, the biggest thing is this will cause a competition from the big companies that will cause the tiny PC tax. Yes, I know exactly what you're saying. And thank you for your comment. Uh, AB 1.6 teraflops is big for VR. Well, as I mentioned before uh, in the previous video, we need to look at it from a long-term perspective so thanks for your comment michelangelo draconis i came here to post that not only i thought that outcome as well uh, but also came here after seeing that a and b set uh and to recommend you to listen to it okay thank you very much for your comment buddy uh ron m thanks you're very welcome alien race current flat AAA games will run decently on steam decks seven inch 800p screen frankly i'm worried they will run poorly when docked with a regular 1080p monitor much less Quest 2s, uh, 1832 by 1920 resolution. Thank you very much for your comment, Alan Ray. So it'll be very interesting to see as well. And Yadim Sarev, how can I install 100 gigabyte um, Red Dead Redemption 2 to the 64 gigabyte device? You'll have to buy the one that's more powerful, of course. Uh, guys, thank you so much for all your comments. I really, really appreciate it. And do also go and check out um, the previous video which was all about, I wish it had more views, but unfortunately it depends when I upload these videos in the week. Um, the previous video was all about what Facebook to integrate Oculus Quest 2 move with Apple Health app. Uh, so we discussed about uh, the potential data breaches or, or what does it mean for data privacy, uh, you know, if Facebook are gonna be working with Apple. So very interesting video. I do suggest, uh, I highly recommend that you guys go and check it out. So guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Remember to like and subscribe, hit that bell notification so YouTube tells you in your video feed, of course, when a new video is uploaded to the channel. Guys, until next time, it's been lovely to be with you. I'll see you in another video very soon. Take it easy and have a great Sunday evening, Sunday morning, or Sunday all together. Ciao. Bye, guys.